Hey everyone, how's everyone doing? Happy Tuesday. Today what I want to do quickly is get into a few reasons that I think a Canon M50 or now the Canon M50 Mark II would be a perfect entry-level camera. Um, I have four easy reasons when I was deciding a couple of years ago what I wanted to use. I tried to just break it down really simple into the fewest needs that I wanted. So number one is always the price. Two was the size and portability. Three was vlogging capabilities. I thought I was going to use it to vlog, but I never really did. I just started, as you can see from my page a couple of weeks ago, to post any type of content. Um, four was the ease of use. When you're a beginner like I was and still am, um, the camera has to be pretty simple, you know, to be able to take it out and take some pictures and take video. You don't want it to be difficult or hard to learn. And um, there were some specific things that I wanted. Like you don't need a flip screen um, on the back of your camera. So um, the M50 here, like I wanted a flip screen but you don't need one. So I think these four points, price, size, vlogging capabilities, and ease of use are the four most important decision points for any beginner to purchase a new camera. So I have the M50 and I'm shooting on a Sony a7 III. Um, the M50 Mark II actually comes out, I think next month. So um, I'm gonna talk Pretty much my knowledge will be about the original M50. I have up a couple of websites for reference, but I'll go through this as quickly and as easy as possible. So number one, this is a Canon M50. Really nice device, pretty small, but I'll start with my first point, which is probably most important to all beginners or anyone purchasing anything is the price. So when I purchased this in 2018, I believe that was the year this device came out, if I'm not mistaken, but I think I paid like $650 or $700, something like that. It was pretty much full price at the time. And that was cheap to me. Most cameras, well, most really good cameras that I was looking at, they range from anywhere from $2,000. My a7 III that I bought a couple of weeks ago was $2,000. Um, I don't suggest a beginner purchase something like that unless you have $2,000 lying around and it's not going to break your bank and you know you're definitely going to use it every day and you're not worrying about money. But I didn't want buyer's remorse. So the M50 was, I think, $700, let's just say. Right now... You can purchase a Canon M50 on Best Buy's website. It's saying um, without a lens, it's $579. So that's just the body. And then if you want to purchase it with the kit lens, the uh, EFM 15 to 45 millimeter, which is the lens that I have on this camera here right now, that's $649. So it's pretty much still regular price as it was a couple of years ago. Amazingly, I also pulled up the pre-sale for the Mark II. Now, if you want to purchase the Canon M50 Mark II with the same kit lens, it's $700. So, $50 more for the newer camera. I'll, I'll go into a little bit more um, features after this, but $50 more for the Mark II isn't bad. And then the Mark II without a lens is $599. So that is $20 more. So right now, today, if you were to purchase a camera price-wise, I would pick the M50 Mark II if you do not have a camera. And I could go into this in more detail in another video. Um, I might be able to link below. I did a video with my friend, uh, Bin Dong about the difference between the Mark I and the Mark II. If you do not have a camera, 
the Mark II, I would certainly get that one. It's only $50 more um, than the older version. The caveat is there aren't many differences between the two. So I think I could cover the basics in point three for that. But for this video, number one is price. If you can afford a more expensive camera, by all means, purchase one. If you're not too sure what you're going to be using your camera for and you don't know how to use one, I would say $550 to $700 is a perfect uh, price range for a camera. The camera does 4K, even though it's cropped, but it still shoots 4K. It has great face detection for uh, pictures and for video. When you're taking pictures, the face detection also detects your eyes. So it does have pretty good features for an entry-level camera. Really cheap. Um, I think it's perfect to learn on. So yes, price, Canon M50, Canon M50 Mark II. I highly suggest either one. If you own a Canon M50 right now, like I do, the original Mark I M50, don't upgrade. There's really no reason to upgrade, but I'll move on to point number two, size and portability. I, um, you know, I shopped around, I was looking at DSLRs, I was looking at mirrorless cameras at that time, I didn't really know what a mirrorless camera was. Um, so when I went to Best Buy and Target and looked online, um, I think I was looking between a Canon, I think it was the, the 7i, I think it was the Canon 7i, and that's a really, it was a really nice camera. It was pretty big. Um, and then I came across the M50, uh, you know, all lined up on Best Buy with all the other cameras. And I was like, I didn't even know it was a real camera. I thought it was like a point and shoot because of the size. And for comparison, this is an iPhone uh, 10, 10s, not the Max or the, or the Pro, which is the regular 10s. And this is the Canon M50. So you could see, and I have my monitor here, I'm just trying to line it up. It is a pretty small device. And for me, I didn't have a fancy bag. Um, I didn't have a lot of accessories. I just wanted something that had the features I needed and wanted and could carry with me wherever I went. And this camera is really small, really light. You could take it anywhere. Without the lens, it probably could fit in your pocket. So. Um, compared to a DSLR, um, or even my my uh, my new mirrorless uh, full frame, the A7 III by Sony, this camera is way smaller. I could take a, a profile picture of both of them and then overlay it here just so you could see. Um, but even then, the A7 III is still smaller than most DSLR cameras and still pretty portable. But entry-level camera, beginner's first camera, the Canon M50 or the Mark II, um, they are the perfect size. And they look like little DSLRs. If you could see, it has like the little lip right here for, your, for the grip, and it's kind of rubber. So you have a good feel. It doesn't feel cheap. It's well put together. Um, point three, <sighs> this I thought was gonna be more important, like I said in the beginning, the vlogging capabilities. When you are, I guess, out vlogging um, with a selfie stick or a gimbal. Um, I haven't really done that. I've tested my gimbal, but um, I'm, I'm not a vlogger. Um, I pretty much just do point and shoots or videos like this um, for the time being. But in my testing, because of the size and weight of the M50, and you could search hundreds of videos on YouTube, and I don't think anyone disagrees that this is the perfect vlogging camera. And it was anyway for like 2019 and 2020. Just because of the fact that if you have a selfie stick, you're holding it all the time, looking into it, and you want something that's gonna shoot, I would say 1080p at least, and most cameras do, but you want it to be really light so your arm doesn't get tired, and this is perfect. On a selfie stick, it's really light, and on the particular gimbal that I purchased for it, it works fine. Because you're saving so much money on the body, only $500, you could use the money you save on really good lenses. If you buy uh, a $2,000, $3,000 camera, then you're also gonna have to buy like a $500 to $1,500 lens, but those lenses will still work on this camera. So you're gonna save money on the body, you could invest in better lenses. So 
plugging capabilities for anyone who needs it. it. It's perfect. And the Mark II, really the only upgrade that I've seen in the Mark II, it actually has a feature where it's like your phone. You can live stream directly from the device. So I'm guessing it has like a YouTube button in there. Um, I haven't seen it, but I'm, I'm assuming once you have your settings all set, there's probably a YouTube button somewhere in the settings. And you click it, and while you're recording with your phone, excuse me, with your camera, it'll, uh, I believe, either live stream straight to YouTube, and I believe you can also upload from your phone. But um, you could research more of that. Uh, I could post the link to the specs. So it's really good for vlogging. Um, my Fourth point was ease of use. Like I said earlier, um, you want something that is inexpensive and you would probably want a phone or camera or computer, laptop, any piece of equipment that's just easy to use if you've never used it before. Um, you, you want a, the smallest learning curve as possible. Canon does a really good job in their settings. There's only about, like, I can tell you right now, if I go into the menu, there's one, two, three, four, there's five, I would say, folders. And the first folder has like eight pages, but it's really concise and it's really easy to read and you know what everything is. And when you scroll onto, say, like cropping, it tells you, save your specified portion of a captured JPEG as a separate image. Like it literally tells you what that feature does. Super easy. The Sony, on the other hand, Man, there, if I would have purchased that Sony a7 III as my first camera, I, I might have returned it again. There's so many options in the settings. Um, I don't know, what, I still don't know what probably half of them do. I had to use YouTube to pretty much figure out what most of it, um, what most of it is. Um, but because I had, a, had an M50 first and it was easy and I learned on this, at least I knew how to take pictures, um, you know, on the camera. I knew what aperture priority was and I already knew what shutter priority was. So I, I knew what I needed to do just taking the box out of the camera, setting it to aperture priority before I even dipped into the settings. I knew I could take a proper picture at least. And then diving into the settings, like I said, they were confusing. I had to do a little bit of research, but it was fine it'll be much better to learn on an easier camera. So that is another reason why I suggest the Canon M50 or the Canon M50 Mark II if you don't own any cameras. Um, so we had price, size, portability, vlogging capabilities, ease of use. And that's pretty much it. Then everything else is down to your personal preference. Like I said, I wanted a screen that flipped out because I thought I was going to vlog and you know, with this camera, when you pull the, the lens out, excuse me, if you pull the screen out, it also flips this way. So when you have it as a selfie mode, you can see yourself on the screen. And pretty much that's what anybody needs if you're vlogging. You wanna see yourself to make sure you're in the picture. The a7 III doesn't have that, but that'll probably be my main picture taking camera and video taking camera. If for any reason I feel like I'm going to live stream or um, vlog outside, I'll just use my M50 in 1080p mode. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think that's probably it. I didn't want this video to be too long. I just wanted to kind of help someone in their decision making. So remember, there are cameras in any price range. If you don't want to spend a lot of money, I'm sure there are Nikons or Sony's in the same range as like 500 to $700. Sony's are pretty portable. None of the Sony's that I've seen, uh, like in Best Buy or the one that I have, have screens that are um, articulate that pop out like this one does. They pretty much are flat and just shift upwards. So you could pull them out a little bit, shift it a little bit up, but it won't flip around. So if you wanted to use a Sony as a um, like a selfie vlogging camera, you'd probably have to buy like a little external monitor to keep there. Um, some people even mount like a cell phone and then they could have the image from their camera just shoot onto the cell phone so you could see yourself that way.
final thought for me. The perfect first camera for a beginner who has never used a real camera before, I would suggest the Canon M50 Mark II. I'll try to link everything in the comments below, like the Best Buy links for the cameras, um, the spec page for the Canon M50 Mark II. Maybe I'll go into a little bit more detail on the major differences. Pretty much from what I've read with um, my friend Bin Dong, the Canon M50 Mark II is a firmware update. I think it's literally the exact same size, exact same shape, exact same ports. Um, nothing has really changed that I saw reading it besides that quick upload feature if you're going to vlog and want to upload it to YouTube. I'm guessing Instagram as well. So, like I said, hopefully that helped you guys um, kind of at least not make a decision, but at least maybe help you in your decision making process when you're trying to figure out what kind of camera you want to buy. Canon M50, really inexpensive and you could spend the rest of the money you save on a body on really good lenses. So, like, please subscribe, and let me know what you want to hear in the future. Until then, I'll talk to you later. Peace, guys.